Now, this is kind of a <clears throat> continuation of the message the Lord had given to us previously. Time is up. This goes along with that message. We're going to be uh, looking at the fig tree in this lesson and how Jesus used the fig tree to warn his people. As you know, or you should know, uh, Jesus cursed the fig tree when he had come to this earth. Uh, he was letting Israel know that he had not found fruit worthy of repentance. And they should have known, if they knew the Old Testament scriptures, what the scripture says concerning the fig tree. But for the most part, the Jews did not know the Bible. They didn't even know the Old Testament scriptures. Because had they had known the Old Testament scriptures, they never would have crucified Jesus. And I want you to see something here, that just because you're saved and born again, even filled with the Holy Spirit, does not guarantee that you're seeing or understanding the New Testament scriptures. Most, and I mean most, of the church today is ignorant concerning the scripture. Sad. They have a very shallow understanding of the Bible. That doesn't mean all, but most. And that's why the majority of the church is going to miss it. That's why the majority of the church is going to be left behind. Because of the value that they placed upon the word. Jesus said some things in the Old Testament and in the New. How many know Jesus is the word? Amen. And he's speaking in the Old Testament as well as in the New Testament. And so in the New Testament, Jesus is verifying the things that were said or prophecy that was prophesied, things that were said in the Old Testament concerning himself. And we need to pay attention to what Jesus is saying because many times when Jesus spoke in the New Testament, he was fulfilling Old Testament scripture. Are you listening? How many know Jesus didn't come to destroy the law of the prophets? He came to fulfill. And many of the prophecies in the Old Testament scriptures were fulfilled in Christ. Some have yet to be fulfilled. I may know the believers in the New Testament have yet to do their part to fulfill Scripture concerning even the bride. There's many places in the New Testament that have yet to be fulfilled that were prophesied in the Old Testament. You really really need to take heed and listen and pay attention, brothers and sisters, to what is about to be said. Let's really slow down and pay attention. This is not one of the slick tongue, quick speaking, millionaire ministers that are just speaking so quickly that you can't even understand what they're saying to get you mesmerized, to seduce you, 
to get your paycheck. That's not what this is about. Our desire, our heart, our burden at this ministry is for you to get it, to understand the scripture. And that's why we take our time. That's why we slow down so that the Holy Spirit can make these things known to you. So we begin with Song of Solomon, chapter 2, in verse 10. If you'd like to follow in the reading of God's word. My beloved spake and said unto me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. That's not just a matter of being seated or sitting down or even laying down and he's saying, rise up. That's not what this is about. This is about a resurrection, people. And if you're going to be resurrected with Christ, you've got to be dead with Christ. When he says, rise up, he's speaking of resurrection power. You've been dead. Are you listening? Dying to self, but now rise up. Amen? Glory to the Lamb, people. These are the words of eternal life. These are the words of resurrection power. Jesus said there'll come a time in the last days when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they will be resurrected. He wasn't talking about those that are in the grave. He is raising up a people in this hour. Are you listening, people? He's raising up a people in this hour. Now, he doesn't stop there. He doesn't say, just rise up. But notice what he says. And it's not to everyone in the church. It's to those, my love, my fair one, my beautiful one, come away. And there's a lot in that, come away. Come away from what? Come away from where? Leave where? Obviously, he's talking about leaving this earth. Are you listening? Rise up and come away. Rise up and come away. For lo, the winter is past. The rain is over and gone. He's trying to help us to understand what season it is, what time it is. This is at the beginning of the harvest. Are you listening, folks? The beginning of the harvest. And he even goes on to say the rain is over and gone. This is the Latter rain. This is the spring rain. Do you see what the Lord is saying to us? Do you see how late the hour really is? Do you see what the Lord is saying when he says he's doing a quick work in righteousness? That he's doing a... Uh, a short work upon the earth. In this verse right here, he says, the winter's past and the rain is over and gone. That's a lot, people. If you understand what these things mean, that's a lot. A lot has happened. And then he goes on to say, the flowers 
the spring flowers appear on the earth. Are you getting the message, folks? The winter is past. The spring rain is over and gone. And the flowers appear on the earth. The time of the singing of birds is come. And the voice of the turtle is heard in our land. It's springtime. When everything's blooming. Everything's blossoming. This is the full peak of life. This has to do with the resurrection, people, after the fall. The season fall, right? When does fall take place? Before winter, right? Winter is God's judgment upon the fall. But what comes after winter? After judgment? A new beginning. New life. Spring. Jesus. Amen? Are you listening, people? Jesus came into this Cursed world, cold, dark, winter, and brought life, new life. Amen? And that's what he wants to do in our lives. He wants to bring us life. He wants to give us new life. He wants to give you and I life, brothers and sisters. Amen? The fig tree. Now we're getting to the message. The fig tree putteth forth her green figs. In another message, we're going to deal, the Lord willing, we're going to deal with the the grapes. But right now, we're just going to deal with the figs. The fig tree putteth forth her green figs. This is very important. Very, 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 very important. If we miss this, we're no different than Israel. We're no different than the Jews. If we miss this, folks. We'll be right back after this. Thank you for supporting Honest News Network. Now, as mentioned, Jesus many times was speaking of Old Testament scriptures when he spake on this earth, when he said things on this earth in his ministry. He was speaking of Old Testament prophecy. Old Testament scriptures. And no doubt, when Jesus said these words, he was thinking about, and he was confirming and verifying what was said in Song of Solomon. Luke 21, verse 29. Jesus said this, and he spake to them a parable. Isn't it interesting that Jesus chose a parable? Because Song of Solomon is also a story. How many know Song of Solomon didn't literally happen? Amen? It's a love song. It's a love story. It's a poem. And here Jesus is speaking in a parable. Behold the fig tree. And all the trees. Listen. When they now shoot forth. You see and know of your own selves. That summer is now. Now. Nigh at hand.
Are you listening, people? What is Jesus saying? You would not know what Jesus is saying in this verse if you didn't know what he was saying in this verse. Are you listening? The fig tree putteth forth her green figs. And the vines with a tender grape give a good smell. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Jesus was very well versed in the Old Testament scriptures. He knew what this verse of scripture said. And for those that also knew this verse, they would understand what he was saying in this verse. Are you listening? You got to know the scripture. You got to study to show yourself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If you're going to enter into his rest, you've got to study. I may know that's the labor. That is the labor of the bride. Study. Study. That's how we enter into the rest of the Lord. Through learning, studying, being a student of the word. You can simply see that this verse goes along with Song of Solomon. Like pieces of a puzzle. Amen? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father... We thank you, Lord, for the beautiful puzzle, as it were, that you've given to us. But, Lord, you didn't leave us to ourselves to put this puzzle together, to understand these things, these mysteries. You sent the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Truth, into this world, to lead and guide us into all truth. And we don't need to try and figure these things out on our own. We know, Lord, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, will reveal these things to us. We pray, Lord, that your people will understand how serious it is to depend upon the Holy Ghost to depend on the spirit of truth, to lead and guide into all truth. Help us, Lord, to realize this is not a game with no consequence. Lord, that this is very serious. We must pay attention. We pray, Lord, that your people, through this message, will become more sharpened And they will become more interested, more more refined in their eagerness and understanding, Lord, of truth. That they will understand that there's things that you've placed in the word, Lord, that are not going to be recognized or seen by the natural eye. But they're there for those that have spiritual eyes. For those, Lord, that have eyes salve, and that those that can see. There's things that you've placed in the scripture, Lord, that are not on the surface. They're not there for the natural man to see. Oh, God, help us to realize the things which are spiritual are spiritual. Spiritually discerned, Lord. We ask that you bless and anoint as we minister your word, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Folks, notice the verse that Jesus places, what he says just before this verse. Maybe it'll become more clear to you what he's saying. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up. Lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. You think that it's a coincidence that this verse is placed before this verse and that this verse goes along with these verses? Is that a coincidence? Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. Here he says, your redemption draweth nigh. A catching away. A translation, if you will. A complete state of release. Do you see how these verses go together, folks? Jesus was speaking of Song of Solomon when he said these things. Amen. He's saying something here, isn't he? He's saying something to us. No wonder over and over Jesus said, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Because he knew that not everyone has an ear to hear. How often do we let things slip, folks? How often do we let things go right by? We miss it. Well, it cost Israel. It cost the Jews for their neglect. It cost them. And it can cost you. We've got to pay attention. I want you to understand something, brothers and sisters. When it comes to studying God's word, it's to investigate. It's to investigate. Are you listening? You've seen it. Where detectives, under a fine-tooth comb, as it were, with magnifying glasses and forensic science and all this technology they have today, they investigate crimes. They investigate things. And prosecution of things that took place years ago because of technology today. How much emphasis do you place upon the word? How much time do you give to the Bible? I want you to understand something. The most valuable thing in your home is your Bible. There's nothing more valuable in your possession, in your life, in this world than the scripture. And I'm talking about the King James Version. There's nothing more valuable on this planet right now. And sadly, it's the most neglected. You think about that. How many people would be taking it serious if the Bible led to treasure and fortune in this world? But because it's treasure and fortune, or it's fortunes and and treasure, it's wealth that is not of this world, The majority don't have any interest in it, sadly. Remember, Jesus said to store up your treasures in heaven. 
How many know the Bible was never meant for the world? It's not meant for the carnal man. The Bible is a spiritual book. Hmm? Spiritual. For spiritual-minded people. Those that have been enlightened, illuminated, those that have had their senses exercised to discern between good and evil. I really would like to see God's people become more interested than ever in the Scripture, in the Bible, pouring over the Scriptures. I want you to see something. I want you to understand something, brothers and sisters. Brother Joseph doesn't just open the Bible and randomly pick a scripture. Years ago, the Lord taught me. The Holy Spirit led me. And I've been learning how to be led every day for the Holy Spirit to lead me to the scriptures that he would have me to understand. No man taught me these things, folks. The things I'm sharing with you right now. No man came to me and showed me that this scripture went together with the scripture in Song of Solomon. These things were revealed to me by the Spirit. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those who love him. But God hath revealed them unto us. How? By his spirit. You can know the truth, people. You can know the truth. Amen? The question is, do you want to? Do you desire to? It's by knowing the truth that you're made free. If those that were listening to Jesus when he said these things, if they had known the Old Testament scriptures, they would have known what he was talking about. Amen? But they didn't. Sadly. They were more concerned with physical, monetary. They would think they were thinking of things on this earth, laying up treasures on this earth, looking for men's admiration, looking for men's applause and praise. They were not looking for the honor that only comes from God. It would be wonderful to see God's people become more diligent than ever when it comes to studying the Bible. There are nuggets of truth, but more than that, there are vast quarries of gold in the Bible. There are veins in the Bible. Are you listening? When you have found one of these veins, it leads to more gold. Amen. I don't know if you understand or not, but for months and months now, we've been digging in one vein. How many know that? We've been digging in the same place, and we're finding more and more, and more, and more treasure. Amen? Now, you don't have to wait for Brother Joseph to do the digging. Get out your pickaxe and do some digging yourself. Amen. Why should Brother Joseph be the only one with a pickaxe? Why should I be the only one digging in this place? X marks the spot, brothers and sisters. Dig right here. 
Dear God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Dig right here. Right here in these verses that have been shared with you today. And you shall see greater things. Deeper things. Mightier things. If you'll dig right here. See, the Holy Ghost has revealed to us where to dig. He showed us where the wealth is. Where the riches are. Praise the Lord. We've struck oil. Did you hear what this preacher just said? We've struck oil. We've struck gold, people. Oh, listen. You don't have to go any further. If you'll begin digging right here, you can get some nuggets yourself. Amen. Glory to the Lamb, people. Hidden treasure. Amen? Hidden. You got to do some work. You got to do some work. You got to roll up your sleeves. But I have learned the Holy Ghost will give you the strength to dig. It'll give you the desire to dig. When others are not digging, the Holy Ghost will quicken you to keep digging. Remember, the wise man dug deep while the foolish man placed his house upon the sand. He did no digging. Are you listening? A lot of folks today, oh, I'm saved going to heaven, but they're not even studying the Bible. They're not praying. They're not seeking God. They're not doing any digging. What to God, God's people would dig in, dig in deep, get down into the depths of the riches of God's grace, the depths, the riches of God's mercy. Understand the depths of the riches of his grace. There's more. More people. Even as we hear the apostles saying, peace be multiplied. There's more. There's more peace. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Full and running over. Amen. Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord. Are you doing your part? Are you digging? Now, I, I think in a lot of ways, God has taken a lot of the hard work out because most of the work, if you think about it, that's in the seeking to find out where we should be digging. But you don't have to seek and search where to dig anymore. Just dig right here. Dig right here. Praise the Lord. Because I believe the Lord's leading us. I believe the Holy Spirit is leading and guiding us. This ministry is being led by the Spirit. Amen. And we can all work together. We can labor together. And we can reap together. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The true riches, people. The true riches. Amen. Praise God. The true riches. Lift up your heads. Your redemption draws near. It's drawing near. Amen. Praise God. He spake unto them a parable, Behold the fig tree and all the trees. 
He's telling you, out of all the trees, behold the fig tree. Don't look at all the other trees. He wants you to notice something. Behold the fig tree. Why is he saying that? As already mentioned, if you would understand these verses, you would understand what he's saying. Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. Oh, I feel the presence of God. Hallelujah. He's calling some away. Amen? Away, people, from this world. Away from this earth. Amen? Caught up to God and to his throne. I feel his presence. I feel his presence. Hallelujah. Some of you will understand. Some of you won't. Thank God for you that have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. I feel the tug upon my heart. Do you? 